Hey everyone, one of you's recommended a game for me between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, and weirdly I don't actually have this in my database of the Alpha Zero Stockfish game, so I'm so glad that you've actually linked me to the game. And in this game, Alpha Zero plays a crisp and clear opening and gets into some complications, sacrificing a piece for an amazing attack, which you'll soon see. So in this game, Alpha Zero is playing white and Stockfish is playing black. The game starts with D4. Black plays e6 and Alpha Zero plays e4. So we get into a French with d5, Alpha Zero plays knight c3, Stockfish plays knight f6, and now e5 is played. And interestingly, this opening seems to come up a lot in computer games. When I was using Leela in some blitz matches, this was the opening that was most often played. After knight fd7, f4, c5, and this is very typical of the computer's variations. Alpha Zero played knight to f3, defending the d4 pawn, and in the link, which I'll put in the description, many people complained about the move that Stockfish now plays, so maybe Stockfish isn't playing with an opening book. So Stockfish in the game took on d4, c takes d4. Normally black would actually play knight c6 here, and the usual moves are bishop to e3, and now black takes on d4 with knight takes and bishop c5, queen d2, and these are the most commonly played moves in this variation. So weirdly Stockfish now takes on d4 straight away. And we get into a very interesting position I think anyway. Alpha Zero plays knight to b5. Attacking the d4 pawn so it's going to regain this pawn very quickly. But black folk throws in a check first. Bishop b4 check. Obviously white's not going to play c3 because then d takes c3. So white blocks with the bishop. And black retreats back to c5. And there's actually a little trap here set by black. For instance, now if white takes this pawn on d4, black can actually play knight takes e5. And after f takes e5, black takes the knight, the knight recaptures, and black plays queen h4 check. So they're going to regain their piece really quickly. After g3, queen takes d4. White has to play bishop c3 to defend their e5 pawn. And once everything gets traded, black actually emerges a pawn up. And black is definitely better in this position, and should have a relatively easy game. So in the game after bishop c5, obviously alpha zero isn't going to fall for these cheap tricks. Instead, they play b4, hitting the bishop on c5. And now it's black who has to be careful. Because if they play bishop b6, white can throw in knight d6 check, and after king e7, play knight g5 and attack this f7 pawn, with white winning this position. So after b4, black throws their bishop back to e7, and now white recaptures the pawn on d4. In the game, Stockfish develops knight c6, so they're hitting this b4 pawn, but alpha zero calmly plays c3 to defend, but black now plays a5, hitting the b4 pawn. So white's forced to push this up to b5, Stockfish now captures the knight on d4, and Alpha Zero recaptures with the c pawn. So Alpha Zero's plan is really simple, just to play bishop d3 and a4, and I think white's got a very nice position. I think I prefer to play white here, just because this bishop on c8 for black is just terribly locked in behind this e6 pawn, a typical French bishop. So knight b6 from Stockfish, a4 from Alpha Zero. Stockfish now plays knight to c4. So hitting the bishop on d2, there's not really much white can do. The bishop on d2 isn't particularly good anyway because it's locked behind all those central pawns. So alpha zero just plays bishop d3 and develops their really good bishop. Stockfish takes on d2, but now white does have to be careful. If queen takes d2 here, black has bishop b4 pinning the queen against the king, and white's going to lose that game. Knight takes d2 is also not as good because then again bishop b4 with a pin. White can castle but then actually black can play bishop to c3. Hitting the rook on a1 and the pawn. And once the rook moves black's going to win a pawn with bishop takes d4. So amazingly in this position the only good move is uh, king takes d2. Which is what alpha zero played. It looks really unusual but actually it makes a lot of sense as you'll see. After bishop d7 from black. White pushes the king to e3, and the king is relatively safe in the center there. It's behind loads of pawns, and I actually really like white's position. The bishop on d7 for black is absolutely terrible, 
And this b5 pawn does a great job of just locking this bishop out. And the play will all come to white. White's basic plan is just put the rook on c1 and maybe play g4, h4. Black plays b6 in the game, and as I just said, the rook to c1 will come, g4 and h4. And actually in the next move, alpha 0 did play g4, launching a pawn storm. So black has to counteract this, they play h5. So white's got a few options. One option is to play h3. Of course black can take, or play g6. If takes on g4, I think this is bad for black, because then h takes g, and white's infiltrating on the h file. Black pretty much has to play rook f8 here, and this is really defensive. White can maybe play rook h7, and after, let's say, g6, and queen h1, white's got a very nice game. So after h5 and h3, black could also play g6, which I think is a fine move. The recommended from Stockfish Tennis for white to play rook to g1. And if h takes g, h takes g. Black can play rook c8, rook h1 and rook f8 again. But I think white is still in command of this position. Again after h5 then. g5 is also an option for white, but I think this is rather defensive. It blocks the position. Black can play g6. Again, I think white is still in the driving seat. They can play queen to b1, bishop b4 from black and rook c1 and king e7. Again, white's got all the play, but it's just going to be a bit more of a slow build up now. So in the game, alpha zero didn't play any of these moves. They actually played queen to g1, allowing black to take on g4, which is what Stockfish did. And now queen takes g4. So white now dominates the g file with the queen and attacks this g7 pawn. Bishop f8 defends it from Stockfish. And now white plays h4, launching the h pawn up the board with more space. And this pawn is now defended by the knight and the rook. So there are plenty of pieces to support it. Stockfish played queen to e7, and now white dropped their rook to c1. I think that's the best rook to do it with, because otherwise black might play queen to a3. So keeping this rook on a1 makes a lot of sense. Stockfish played g6. White now plays rook to c2, preparing to double on the c file. And king d8 from Stockfish. But as I said, white's got all the play now. They just play rook a c1 infiltrate on the c file i just want to demonstrate how white's going to take advantage of black's position so if black now starts playing nothing moves like rook h7 white can play knight g5 and again if um, black plays a nothing move white plays queen g3 and after rook h6 queen e1 so if black starts just flailing around like this is how white will infiltrate with rook c7 ideas after rook h6 just play rook to b7 and get on the 7th rank. So that's White's idea in this position. So after Rook A C1, Queen E8 is played by Black. And now White plays Rook to C7. But this is met by Stockfish with Rook to C8. And a trade occurs. And Rook C6 from Alpha 0. But fortunately for Black, they're defending everything really well here. Stockfish is known for their defensive capabilities. They play bishop to b7. The point is that if white now takes his pawn on b6, black can play king to c7 and has actually trapped this rook. So white's got to give up the exchange. Rook d6 is the best move, but then bishop takes d6 will be played. e takes d6, king takes, and knight to e5. So white's the exchange down. And white will have, definitely have a job of trying to win this game, let alone draw it. So Alpha 0 is too good for that, he didn't take on b6, he played rook to c2 instead. Stockfish played king to d7, and alpha 0 plays knight to g5. Bishop e7 is played by Stockfish, and now here comes an amazing move from alpha 0. They play the ultra aggressive sacrifice, bishop takes g6. So the point of this move is that if f takes g6, white can follow up with queen takes e6. After king d8, white plays queen takes b6. After king d7, e6 is checkmate, and that's all forced. So after bishop takes g6, black can't take this off. Instead, they have to play bishop takes g5, is what's happened in the game. And alpha 0 follows up with queen takes g5. So Stockfish now takes this bishop on g6, 
But now Alpha Zero follows up with another aggressive move. F5. The point is, again, that if E takes F5, White can play Queen F6 and threaten Queen to D6 mate. If Queen F8, then Queen takes B6, and White is clearly winning this game. Even though White's a piece down, this bishop on B7 is actually terrible for Black. Again, after F5, if they take with the other pawn, White can play Queen to G7, hitting the rook on H8 if the Queen ever moves. If King D8, Queen C7 is mate. And if Queen E7 from Black, actually White can play Rook to C7. And after King takes C7, just Queen takes E7 with an amazing game. So this F pawn actually cannot be taken by Black. So Stockfish is forced to play Rook to G8 to defend this G6 pawn. But Alpha Zero continues with the threats. Queen H6, threatening Queen H7 check. Again, if Black takes this pawn, They've got queen h7 with queen c7 ideas. And if he takes, again, they've got queen h7 with queen c7 ideas. And king e6 also fails to queen takes b7, where white's just regained material with an amazing attack against black's king. So after queen h6, Stockfish has to play queen to f7 to defend everything. And alpha zero just pushes the pawn to f6, and they have an amazing pawn chain. So even though white is a piece down, they've got an amazing position. The point is though that, is this bishop on b7 really a worthy piece? It's not exactly doing anything, it's locked in by these two pawns, and even this g6 pawn is locking it out of the game. So it can't exactly zigzag this way out, because it's locked out of the game. And white now has this past f6 pawn, with a nice pawn chain. So in the game, Stockfish played king to d8. White plays king d2, and black plays king to d7. So black's just flailing around here. Rook c1 from alpha 0, again king d8. And white now continues their attack with queen to e3. Preparing queen c3 and infiltrating the c-file. Black plays queen to f8. Alpha 0 plays queen c3. And queen b4 is played, so black wants to swap queens. Alpha 0 allows this with queen takes. The pawn recaptures and they move the rook to g1. But white is now clearly better in this position. Black plays b3, king c3 is played, they're going to pick up another pawn, bishop c8, and king takes b3. So white has now two pawns for the piece, but the piece is terrible for black. Bishop d7, king b4, bishop e8, and rook a1. So white might play a5 at some point, so king c7, a5, Bishop d7 and a takes b6, king takes b6, alpha 0 plays rook to a6, check, king b7 and king c5. So white's just going to walk the king right onto the 7th rank. Black plays rook to d8 with some cheap tricks if king d6 is played. Alpha 0 is too good for that, rook a2, rook c8 from black and now just king d6 hitting the bishop. The bishop moves to e8 and just king e7. Bishop takes b5 here, is met by f7. So after king e7, black plays g5. But after this move, alpha 0 just takes on g5, and Stockfish resigns the game. And they're going to queen very soon. White can even take on e6 next move if they wish. So this was an extraordinary positional game by alpha 0. The key point seems to be here, where the bishop takes on g6, and after bishop takes g5, Queen takes, F takes G6, F5 to me is the winning move and such an amazing move. It's amazing that that pawn can't be taken due to the threats against Black's king. And after Rook G8, Queen H6, Queen F7 and F6, this is what wins the game ultimately for White. And I actually think a human player could probably defeat Black in this position. It suddenly turned into a very positional game where white's a piece down, but has an amazing pawn chain in the centre. And it's very easy for white just to walk their king up and win the game. So thank you for suggesting this game to me. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. Please drop me a like, comment or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Please also give me a comment if you want to see any other games. Or drop me a line if you want me to commentate over one of your games that you played. 
and I'll see you next time.